For many years, there have been some misconceptions about feeding pelicans. People thought they were taking care of the pelicans, helping them survive by throwing the scraps left over after they cleaned the fish they caught. And it gave them a good feeling seeing the birds going after the scraps that they tossed them. However, by feeding fish scraps to pelicans, we're doing anything but helping them. Brown pelicans are the most common pelican species found in Florida. If you've ever seen them feed in their natural behavior, you'll notice that they fly over open water looking for schools of bait fish. When they spot them, they dive down and scoop them up in their beaks. One of the things we've learned from observing this behavior is that the size of the fish that they're normally catching is very small. The reason is that their throats are adapted to these small sized fish and they're easy to swallow. Another is that fish crabs often have sharp bones that can get caught in the pelican's throat too. Another issue with feeding pelicans is a long-term negative effect called habituation. Habituation simply means training a behavior pattern, like you might do when you train a puppy to come when it's time to eat. Just as that dog would develop certain behaviors or habits as it grows up because of the expectations you have trained into it, so will young pelicans that are fed by people who fish and feed them scraps. Instead of flying over water and scooping up small bait fish, they will lose their natural fear of humans. As a habit, pelicans come to expect to get their food by approaching humans to pick up scraps that are thrown to them, a dangerous proposition. Please tell people you know that they can best help pelicans by letting them get the food the way nature intended them to, by flying through the air and hunting for bait fish to eat. And please, don't feed the pelicans. I got her. Thanks, Sarah. Well, let's take her to where they can mend this damaged wing. Lucky for her, you were here just now. Yeah, every time I come to the beach, especially around the pier, this happens. Yeah, you're right. I only wish everyone knew what to do, like you, when they see an injured pelican. That one is like so many brown pelicans we get here that have been injured as a result of some fishing related incident. People who are fishing almost never intentionally harm pelicans, but some of the things they do cause them harm nevertheless. Since the pelicans often fly where the fishing activity is taking place, either because that is where their natural food is or because they have become habituated to people and expect fish scraps to be thrown to them, they are vulnerable to getting injured. The two most common ways pelicans are injured are by getting caught on hooks and lures and by getting tangled in fishing line. The hook and line often get caught in their beaks, wings, and torsos. There are two kinds of injuries we see most here. One is holes in the pouch that can become infected or because the holes are so large the pelicans lose the fish they catch through those holes. The other is injuries to their fragile wings as a result of being wrapped in fishing line. Every year we get literally hundreds of injured brown pelicans here and we have a very good track record of rehabilitating them so they can be released back into the wild and survive on their own. It is unlikely that people who are fishing can practice some method to stop hooking and tangling up pelicans other than to stop feeding them scraps because the pelicans are just as likely to continue flying where the fishing is taking place. So if we can't stop hooking and tangling up pelicans, what can be done to reduce pelican injuries and death? The answer is in the way we handle the pelicans after they are caught. Just as people have always thought they were doing the right thing by throwing scraps to pelicans, people have thought that if they got a pelican caught on a hook and they cut the line, the pelican could fly away and they would be fine. Of course, we have seen the kinds of injuries pelicans suffered to their beaks and wings as a result of their not being freed from both the hook and the line. For example, if a pelican is caught on a pier or a bridge that is far above the water, the line that is left after cutting will trail behind the flying bird and may get caught in trees where the bird can suffer a slow and painful death. We have learned that there are ways of handling pelicans that are caught on fishing hooks and lines that will save them from injury to the pouch under the hard part of their beaks on the spot so they can go free without needing rehabilitation. The initial understanding must be that cutting the line, no matter how short, is not the appropriate way to free a pelican. The hook must be removed. 
First thing to remember is how to prepare the pelican for hook removal. It starts with gently catching it by the beak, holding it loosely enough for it to breathe, and covering its head with a cloth of some kind like a towel. The cover will calm the bird. Once the pelican is under control, hook removal is next. Do not remove the hook the way you do from a fish by pulling it through the beak or wherever else it's embedded because that will create a bigger hole that can become infected or make catching fish difficult for the pelican. Push the barb end through and clip the barb off with wire cutters and then you can pull it back out without injuring the pelican. One of the roughest situations is where the pelican is far below the person on a high pier or bridge. Getting the bird up to where the hook can be removed can be challenging. Some places now have nets to help lift the pelicans to where the hooks and line can be removed without injuring them. If there is no net available, the next best option is to walk the rod and the bird off the pier or bridge to a place where you can reach the bird to hold it and gently remove the hook and line. If a net is not available or the option to walk the pelican off the pier or bridge is not practical, the pelican should be reeled in gently and with the help of others, captured and held while the hook and line are completely removed. Whatever you do, never just cut the line and let the hooked pelican fly away. So, the steps in rescuing a pelican that has been hooked are to gently hold the bird by the beak, allowing it to breathe, covering its eyes with a cloth to calm it, and cutting the barb off before pulling the hook out so you won't create a big hole in the pouch under the hard part of its beak. Anglers need to apply sound judgment when removing hooks and line from a pelican. If the bird has swallowed the lure or the line is cut into its body, or there appears to be damage to the very delicate wings, it's time to transport the pelican to a rehabilitation facility where experts can save the bird's life. In some public locations like piers, docks, or beaches, transportation is available. In others, the person rescuing the pelican will need to transport it to a rehabilitation center. Now you've learned about the importance of protecting pelicans. You've learned about properly disposing of your fish scraps instead of feeding it to the birds. You've also learned about how to remove hook and line if you accidentally catch one of them. With your help, pelicans can thrive and be here for us all to watch and enjoy. It also gives us the opportunity to enjoy fishing now and for the future. So please be a responsible angler in all that you do and help others learn the importance of protecting pelicans.